Good morning, everybody. My name is Deborah Byrne from Deborah Byrne Psychology Services. And I'd just like to wish everybody a happy new year. Um, and this week I'm going to be talking about this week's blog, which is all about succeeding at your new year's resolutions or goals for the year. Um, it doesn't matter what which you know term or phrase you use. Um, it is to get you to uh, have a better or higher success rate than most people do. In fact, by this Friday, about 50% of us will have given up on our New Year's resolutions. And by the middle of February, we're talking about 80% and probably towards the beginning of March, um, we're in fact talking about a complete 90% failure rate on anybody trying to uh, get those New Year's resolutions or goals for the years completed. Um, and there's a number of reasons why we fail um one of them being is we try to go it alone uh another reason can be because a bad day any just one bad day can lead us to feel okay that's it I'm getting up. um other reasons can be um you know time management uh the goal itself is too big um and there's a whole host of other reasons why we fail and i've listed them out um kind of the the top reasons why we fail. I've listed those out at the beginning of the blog. Um, so do go and check it out. It's at www.debraburnpsychologyservices. But what I really want to talk about this morning is giving you a better chance at succeeding. Now, whether that is, um, you know, you're a business owner or whether you're just an individual and you want to work on some goals uh, for this year. Um, so the first point I would say to you is, um, try and cut it back a little bit. Um, when we decide to tackle our lives as an individual, we think, OK, I have to do uh, A, B, C, D and E in there. And we go all the way through the alphabet and we think everything has to change and all one, one big goal. And that immediately sets you up for failure because you've taken it on and you've taken on too much. You think you have to tackle everything in your life at once. Again, big, big, big no, no. We need to break it down. We need to get down to the baby steps. Um, we need to give ourselves quick wins. And I'm talking about things you can achieve within a week, within a, a, a month. Um, and if you are a business owner, I would go one project at a time. And even at that, I would say, OK, you may have your overall financial goals for the year as a business owner, but I would break that down even into 12 week cycles um, and see what can I do in the next 12 weeks to achieve and then have, you know, your financial target. And even as an individual, I wouldn't plan out any more than 12 weeks at a time. Um, you know, there is the, it's OK to have an idea of what you want to achieve in a year, but please bring it back down to smaller steps. So what else can you do? Um, you, as I said, set realistic goals. So then we will get an accountability partner. Going in alone is shown to be one of the biggest ways to fail. So even if the person hasn't got the same goals as you, so say you're somebody who wants to get healthier this year and you say over the next month, I'm going to do, I'm going to walk 10 minutes a day or I'm going to walk 20 minutes a day. Or by the end of the month, I'm going to get that up to 30 minutes, five days a week. I'm going to get up my walking five days a week. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to have an accountability partner that is doing exactly what you're doing. Maybe they're, they've decided, maybe they're a bit fitter than you. Maybe they're going to go to the gym. They've opted to do something else. Um, maybe walking isn't their thing. It doesn't matter. It's somebody to check in with, but also somebody that will be there for you. That will be your supporter. That will, you know, celebrate every small achievement. And that is very, very important. S celebrate every small achievement um, because your mind needs those quick wins. And that's why I say to reduce it down to a 12 week maximum plan. In fact, I would do monthly plans if you can break it down, see what I can get done in a month and have small wins each week and celebrate them. Um, when we just, you know, when we fail to recognize the small achievements, we, in fact, set ourselves up for failure. So do keep that in mind. Baby steps all the time. It's the smaller, smaller achievements will lead to the bigger wins in the end. Um, so then I would say to you is planning. OK. You'll need a notebook 
or you'll need a diary, preferably a diary. Now, it doesn't matter if you're online, if that's an online diary or if it is on, um, you know, a paper diary. If you're like myself, I love my paper diaries. So if you're doing your planning, break down the project, do a mind map. So you have your goal in mind in the middle of it and then map out everything you think needs to be done to achieve that, whether it's a project at work or whether it is, um, you know, whatever the goal is you want in the next month or two or 12 weeks. Break it down, what I can do each month, then what I can do each week and then what I'm going to do each day. So you have to block that in. You have to set aside a re realistic amount of time you have to set us every day and you have to block that into your diary. You must put it down. If you don't put it into your diary, um, you know that you're going to have uh, if you're setting up a morning routine, for instance. Um, so whatever your morning routine is, you have to block out that hour, that two hours. And in that two hours, you could have journaling, meditation. You could have, you know, eating your breakfast because there's maybe something you do. You skip breakfast. Um, you want to get into the habit of eating breakfast. You have to block into your diary exactly the same as you would if you were planning out a project and work. You put it into your diary and you list it out and you tick it off. At the end of the day, you tick it off and celebrate. OK, you celebrate by journaling it out or using rewards and retreats uh, or, or treats. Um, so I've talked about using uh, uh, rewards and treats and um, both should be given, you know, um, freely um the difference being uh one costs money and the other doesn't cost any money and i would say to you in that case then you give them frequently or cost very little you know we're kind of talking about say under five euros and give them frequently so that's a daily treat that's a daily treat that is very low costing and at the end of the day you celebrate it can cost absolutely nothing um, whether, you know, I don't know what, what, what would work for you. You've got to sit down and think about, well, what will work for me? What will work as a reward for me? Small ones. And at the end of the week, maybe you'll give yourself a bigger, bigger uh, treat or a bigger reward at the end of the month. Absolutely. At the end of the month, it has to be a bigger reward. Um, and at the end of the 12 weeks, Again, it would have to be a, an even bigger reward and mark those in, mark them down, write them down on the day. What am I going to have at the end of that day or what am I going to have at lunchtime? What am I going to have? What am I going to do for myself that is a reward for me or a treat for me? And mark again, you put them in your planner, you mark them out and you stick them down there. Um, make a time if you're, ha you know, with your accountability partner, a time to check in. So again, you set the timer on your phone, a reminder on your phone, or you set it in your diary, text, message, whatever it is. You can set up a messaging system uh, and messenger, or you can do it in the WhatsApp or some sort of a group where all the accountability buddies can come together and you're keeping each other accountable. Or if you're having a bad day, you have these people in this in this group, uh, either on Messenger or on WhatsApp. It's a private group and you can talk to one another. I'm having a really bad day. I'm finding it tough today. And people are there then. They're your supporters. They're there then to boost you up and lift you up. Um, the next thing I would say to you is, um, you know, if you've taken on something and perhaps it is a, it's a cost, finances can cause a huge uh, failure for people. They want to do something or they take on something and they they it, the cost is unrealistic for them. Um, in that case, I would say to you is have a look at the cost of the project. Have a look at the cost of the goal and what you want to do. Perhaps it is too costly at this moment in time. So again, I would break it down. Is there any way I can do that for free? So if it was a goal was to get healthy for the year, perhaps you can't afford the gym membership, but walking is free. Um, you know, maybe this, you, there's something else you can get that will help you. Uh, that is free. Think about it. Can I do this for free or can I break it down that the cost isn't as much if I break it down into smaller goals, remember, we're breaking the goal down into smaller, manageable baby steps. Um, so think about that. Think about the cost. Am I setting myself up for failure by picking something that at this moment in time is too costly for me? But if I save towards it, perhaps your goal can be saving towards 
making that next purchase or going on the holiday or, you know, or or maybe it's something you want, some equipment you want to buy for a business. Right again, write it down, plan it out. How am I going to get there? What steps do I need to take, um, you know, to to make sure I save X amount of money each week or every second week in order to achieve that financial saving and then I can add that's my reward is to then go and buy whatever it is I want to do or invest in whatever I want to invest in. So do think about that and plan it out. The whole key to this is planning it out. The next two are really very personal and whether it's in business or whether it's in, um, uh, you know, as an individual, when it comes to goals, setting goals or any sort of resolution for ourselves, we have to be at least, firstly, honest with ourselves. If we're not honest with ourselves, we're going to take on projects or maybe take do something that it's not in line with us and what we want to do. We may take on something that somebody else wants us to do. The second point would be, is it in line with your beliefs and your perspective on your life? Um, you know, so again, all to do with your why. In anything you do, you have to have a why. Why am I doing this? Why do I want to achieve this? Is this for me? Um, is it in line with what I believe? Um, is it in line with my values? Uh, if it isn't, you're setting yourself up for failure. You have to be honest with yourself. If I achieve this, whatever it is, whatever the goal is or whatever the resolution is, um, you know, why am I doing it? Why do I want to do it? If you don't have that why, you're setting yourself up for failure, as I said. If you do have the why, it will carry you forward on the bad days. It will carry you forward um, and keep the momentum going. At first, with our goals and our resolutions, we may not be motivated to do them. We may take, you know, motivation doesn't come immediately. People think, oh, I'll do it when I'm motivated. We won't. So knowing our why will get us thinking and getting us a little bit motivated, but it'll also help us start. And when we start something, then we become motivated. That's when the motivation kicks in. And knowing your why will keep you motivated for longer. So have a think about all those points. I've 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 listed out, you know, um a, a lot of things I've list as I said, I listed out the um the problems that people have, the failures, how and why they fail, and then I've gone through and I've listed out um you know how you can actually counteract those and how you can achieve achieve uh, achieve all your goals. Um as always, um if you have any questions or um, you know, something specific to you, you can always post below this video. Um, if you tag me, I'm more likely to see it. Um, or you can catch me on social media. I'm known across social media as DB Psychology. So check me out on Instagram, Twitter um, or here on Facebook. And I would say uh, good morning and good luck with your goals. Good luck with your resolutions. And um, I'm hoping that you're in the in the 10 percent this year. So have a great year. Thank you.